those magnificent men in their flying machines. They go up to the above, they go down to the above. fit in the top wing I'll go through it as best I can and, and if there is any questions then um, I might redo the video when I get my wife back to hold the damn camera but we'll give it a go so the key is now is you've obviously fitted these onto your fuse already all right you got to measure I do it this way I mean I don't know if it's the right way or the wrong way but this is just the way I do it you see you measure look at that there I use the drill you measure the gap from the back of the strut to the back Let's see what it is, which this one turns out to be uh, with this one it's it works out uh, <clears throat> 20 mil from the back of the rib the capping strip sorry yeah so that's that one there and then of the one at the back measure from the back of the, this that one again and that's 13 mil and then what you do is you take it the ruler this is where it gets awkward you then measure it if I can do it on here with my hand this is really stupid really. You'll get the gist, I think. You measure back like it says on the plan, either side, so that's 13 there, 13 there, mark it, and mark it square there. And you do the same for all four, that's 20 mil, mark it as it is on the plan, 20 mil, same on that side, and the same on that side, so all four are the same. All right, check and double check, and you've done that. Then this is the trick, I'm gonna have to put the camera down now, but I'll back in a sec. Then, believe it or not, it's gonna be fun to do. I'm glad I've already done it. I'll put it on so right just so you I'll try and get you just a bit weigh it down right. okay then right come back right you've got your plane on on in position roughly and what you need to do is if I can get this on you pull it up to the mark where it is so you want to get the edge of this strut you don't want to hang on it. Pull it back to where the rib starts, if that makes sense, if you can see it. See there. Obviously, keep it on the line and there. And then what you got to do is, well, what I've done, once you've got your hands on it, because you only need to start with one, that's all you do. You then get a smaller drill that fits within the hole you've already pre-drilled. Right, <clears throat> and put it in your drill, and then you back drill it. So I've got my hand, because I've obviously done it. In other words, when I say back drill, you drill it in first to get the key. Don't try and drill it forward first because it'll move the strut about like mad the spot. Yeah, the strut. Back drill it when you've held it. You hold it in position obviously in line. Back drill it a bit. Then turn it forward and then drill through. Once you've drilled through, you then take the whole, take the change drill bit to the right width is what, that's all you pre-drilled the strut in. The right the width for the hole. Obviously that's not going to be in position. Take it all the way to the plane. Take the whole lot away and drill the hole. Okay, so I'll try and get the plane off. Oh, I got that first time. Right. <coughs> right. Oh, one hand. Right. And like I've done there, this bolt is the right bolt you're going to use. Now, the way I've designed it, I'm going to do it the other way. And rather than on the original plan, they just say use self tapping nuts and screw into the wood via up, up through this, this uh, strut into the wood. But I think after time, that's going to wear. You know, because it's only hardwood. So what I've designed, on the one I gave Barry, I noticed that uh, the guy had put bolts through, which I thought was a brilliant idea. So that's what I've done there. So you put your first bolt through, just to basically put your first bolt through, all the way, right? It won't be tight, because it's in wood. But we'll come to that after. And that's your guiding bolt then. That's your guide. So that's in. And then what I'll do is put the camera, sorry about the camera, but one hand is very difficult to like, bloody do it all. So, uh, Put the plane back on. So you got your bolt. Right, back in. Right, that's in. Right, wait a minute. This way. Right. So you've now you've got your bolt through. There. Put a nut on it and tighten it. Hand tighten it with a, a normal nut. Yeah. So it's just hand tight. Once you've got that hand tight, then you move over to the other side of the strut here. Right. This is where it gets tricky. But you, I mean, you know, this is just part of the build. You do exactly the same. You notice you got to get it in line with the lines you've made, and obviously in the same position as the other side. Back drill the hole again, right? And then, you know, I mean, you don't have to take it off. Then you just drill through. And then when you've drilled through, okay, this is what I've done. Because these are the four bolts you're going to use. You put that one in position and screw it in, so it's in position and screw it down. Once that one's in position. 
okay you then once that's tight into position you then move to the next one and copy the sequence again follow your line put it in pre back drill it with a smaller drill and once you've done it drilled just repeat the system again and put that bolt in make sure you put the bolt in each time you do what each one side of the strut and then on your final strut you do exactly the same thing all right put your bolts in just hand tight so they're in you don't have to bolt a nut on the other end because it'll hold itself with the pressure and then if you've made the wing straight which nine out of ten times or nine and a half out of ten times it should be straight you shouldn't have a problem when you put the dreaded bottom wing on to see that they're in line I mean you can do it where you've just got you've done the back tighten up the back bolt so you, if you're worried about it not being straight I mean I'm a bit more confident in the fact that I've built it straight so I'm prepared to take that risk but if you're not sure put the one bolt in put the other one on and go through the painstaking experience of putting it, the bottom wing on if that makes sense just so you can get a line anyway once they're all in and tightened up put your bottom wing on and once your bottom wing's on bolt it up as in it's going to be in the position it's in then you need to take the plane because it's such a small workshop right take your plane bring it into your living room or a, a suitable space put it up, stand it up on its nose <clears throat> and then stand right back as far back as you can go in the living room or wherever you are and see with your eyes around about 10 15 feet i used to get an eye if it's straight and if it is straight you're laughing if it's slightly out then you can either give it a try widen the hole a bit so you can move the wing back but you only widen it on one little side one there or there but you shouldn't have to do that to be honest it should be fine okay and that's the best i can say about it with one hand <laughs> so i've checked mine and it's straight so i'm quite chuffed with that so obviously that's in now and the next stage is to show how i'm going to keep these bolts in position with epoxy plus another bolt to tighten them up so they never come loose okay okay this is about to do the bolt so it's in position so here we go you get your bolt make sure by the way the bolts fit the nuts all right because if you put one bolt in once it's in and it's not it's cross studded you've, you've got a problem <laughs> so you put your bolt in so far you put it in like that so you don't catch the bottom of the thread when you put the epoxy on so that's about there i do okay and then before you do anything else you get a piece of rough scrap balsa and you pre-back drill it again with the width of the drill that's going to take it it doesn't matter where you do it back drill it certain depth okay and you get a spare nut bolt even wiggle it in to make sure you've got enough depth right. like so a little bit of play it doesn't matter the more play the better to be fair so you've got a bit of play there lovely right <clears throat> now you've got that you bring it up against there because you've got to measure it so you cut it back rough don't matter because it's all going to be sanded so. let's have a look so, right. that'll do it lovely then you mix up your epoxy resin this is five minute epoxy hence why uh, it takes got to be quick as they say but it's there so we'll put a piece in there it's five minute epoxy do, 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 do. See that there. I don't know if it's on the camera or not. Is it? Yep. That's the good. cocktail stick. Mix it in. A good mix. Now what you do is basically get it inside under the bolt there. Strap it on. Okay. Put it in under around the bolt because the threads will drag it through either way into the thing, which doesn't really matter because that's all it that matters. Right. You have got that bit. Get your Allen key. Screw it down into it. you got it there then what you need to do is you get your bolt from underneath you put your bolt on I'll try and keep it in the camera right. tighten that up sticky stuff no, I think it's still there you just want to hand tight nothing more I'll right, do it and then with this block so it's clean get your rest of your right, I'll try and do it in the, the remainder of it you just fill it up with epoxy so it fills up in there once you've done that get rid of that get a bit of cyano the reason you put the cyano in it's probably it's quite understandable it just gives it a quick hold so it's just cyano let's do that run a bit 
if you want. There's no need for this, I'll just do it. Put a bit down the side. And you push this on top, find the hole, push it in, and that's it down. The sign I'll hold it in position whilst the epoxy sets. Then uh, you just get a little clamp. I might not need it in all of them, but this one did. So and there you have it. And that'll hold it in. And obviously you sand these to shape when you get to it. Leave it five, ten minutes, doesn't really matter. And that will give the strength for the bolt. Because obviously underneath when it's cured, you take these off and that'll be rock solid. Absolutely rock solid. It won't move. So I guarantee you. So that's that. Okay, hope that helps. And Ian, that's I know you're gonna use these things. Ian Mac Macintosh has got a good idea. He was just suggesting do it like you do with a wing bolt. But it's a, unless they're very small ones and they're fiddly. I think it's even more fiddly than the other way. But that's a good idea. If you can get them in there and squeeze them in and then do what I epoxy them in, then yeah, go, go for it. But that is a good idea and that's another way to do it if you want to go the boat route. Okay? Alright chaps, if you can hear over the blinking wind it's blowing a gale. It's blowing all the bins outside and everything, so well what can you do? Uh, this picture's of, of the real Sotwith pup <coughs> at the Shuttleworth collection. And this is a bit I'm attempting to duplicate as close as possible. So bear with me whilst I move the camera back to the model. And we don't get seasick whilst I'm doing it, or air sick, pardon the pun. So here we go. Oh, right, you can get it in there. It's about it falling trying to get it all in, so maybe if I go right now, right. so I can get it all in, it's not going to be easy this, oh, if only my camera lady was here, so much for my duvet day as people called it, <laughs> never mind, it's only for girls I suppose, <clears throat> oh, I'm going to have to do this in stages chaps because I can't sort of get it all in, so here we go right, the idea is, is, if you can see, I'm sorry if it's not that good but I'll do my best, I'm going to try and move everything up, okay, right, I'll go through it, try and keep it all in the camera, that's about it, okay, is that in yeah, right, this is again, scrap bolsa, sheet, or whatever you got lying about, <clears throat> what I've done is I'll go through it the best way I can, any questions as usual and carry on. And Ian, I promise, Ian McIntosh, I'll try my best to get hold of you tonight. Okay, so here we go. This is a bit of scrap bolster to imitate the spars to make them wooden rather than the metal things that are on the plane. I've done it so that this goes to two, two centimetres width. And I've debated for ages whether to keep one bit thick. This is, I think this is part, I think this is 3.5 thick width. Okay, uh, but I've gone, I've decided that I'm going to go both ways on it. So that when it's on there it's set central okay to the strut and as you notice they're not the right down to the bottom of that because i'm going to try and imitate what's on the real thing so what i've done is where like if you look on the backtrack the video and look on it you'll see that at the bottom of the wood struts i've got a, a metal plate bracing plate that goes on there but what i've done to imitate it is use permanent marker and just marked around it up to a certain part so that the wood covers it if that makes sense top and bottom unless you really want to go the whole hog. If it was a quarter scale model I was doing, I would actually make it with proper metal plate grips. But this is too small and fiddly. And there is a limit, so, even for me. So anyway, but obviously if you fancy doing that, and go for it. But there you go, so what I do then is, you've got your measurement to the width and the length you want. And they're all going to be the same on either side, okay? So then what you do is, is you cut enough strips, as I've done here, cut enough strip lengths, to do the whole lot okay and then another little tip is your off cuts such as this okay <coughs> they come in handy if you don't have the strip wood already what you do is because they're obviously going to be the same thickness and what I tend to do is is once I've got all my eight pieces that I want these will fit lovely inside because they're the same width and they just happen to be exactly the same width and so if I get a scrap piece here you'll see what I mean and that way when you come to sanding it all you're going to have enough there to sand it round to shape and it takes away that horrible looking metal bit in the middle okay so that's the way to do it and it looks thick but once you've sanded it all that's what i was debating on how thick to have this once it's all sanded to shape you'll be laughing right that's that lot so hopefully that's made sense so you cut all these to size width and length and obviously the off cuts you could do the same but either way afterwards they're all gluing 
Now, the other thing with this as well, so I've decided for the rigging, if I haven't lost it, the rigging plate. Let's see if I've got this in camera because it's quite important. Oh look, and there you go. These are, look what you miss his hair grips. Okay, these are dead handy, these hair grips. This is to make the points for the rigging wires. If you tend to use real wire or nickel elastic like I'm going to use on this because it's not a structural part of the plane, it's just for show. Okay, if it was quarter scale, it would obviously be more important because it is a structural part of the wings. But <coughs> then you would have the parts for it. But this is a quick and simple way of making it. And I'll come to that bit as we go. But what I tend to do with it is, is I will, once you've got your plate, on, you cut, you bend this to 45 degrees. I did have one here, but I don't, no, that's gone. That's, you bend it so that's at 45 or 90 degrees, whatever they call it. And you make a groove in here so that it sits into your plane. So there'll be a nice groove in there. So obviously it's sitting there. And this should be, because if you look at the plane on the real plane, this should be sticking out not too far, but enough so you can get about that. So you've got the actual head of it, the pin there. So you can feed your wires through because obviously you're going to have right on the real plane you're going to have wires that are going across the top and you're going to have the wires going down to the wing pivot and then such forth but you can because it's suddenly it's not bang on to scale you don't need more than one in there to be honest and if need be once it's all epoxy then you can widen that with a screwdriver or a pair of pliers yeah so you can get the hole bigger but obviously you need you've got to repeat this on the top and you've got to do it on the bottom as well okay just to make life easy for yourself, okay? Because that's what it would be like on the real plane, similar. So obviously you bend that so it's in hidden. Now, next stage is, is once you've, to save yourself a lot of acid, normally add epoxy both sides, but it's no need because you're gonna have a wooden bit in the middle here, the strip. So epoxy this side where you're gonna have the clips. That's important. So that you cut your groove out for your clip. Once it's in, epoxy this side, clamp it on. Five minute epoxy will do. Once that's in and set, then you can work the rest with super glue. There's no problem at all. So you and then obviously you put your next piece in. Okay. But obviously what you want to do is you, if you really want to be precise, you get your off cut strip a bit of wood, which you know is the right width. Okay, that'll be in there. And then you super glue that onto your actual epoxy part, if that makes sense. Yeah, don't worry about if it sticks out because you're going to sand it all to shape. And then you see, once you've got them in position, which takes seconds for them to stick, you can then stick your outer piece, just use normal super glue, and that way you've got it on. It's never going to move because the epoxy is holding one side, if that means so. You've got that. And once your clips and all that are in, which I'll show after in the next video, you then come to the nice tedious bit, well, the fun bit, depending on what you like doing, of sanding it all to shape to get the effect. So I hope that explains it. So far. and obviously you repeat the same thing all round all four so you need eight clips top and bottom two on each side to help you with the rigging okay so hopefully that makes sense and don't forget that you must get the even either sides so that's what your grips are for okay okay <coughs> there's the original like I said right outside the brother the batteries ran out typical so there's the original okay of the pup, sort with pup at Shuttleworth, and there's my version of it. This is only with the first coat of stain on it, okay. But uh, once it's had a second coat of stain, and then the yacht varnish fits on it, it will look more or less similar. Not exactly the same, but similar enough. So I, I don't know if you agree with me, but I mean that's worth the effort. <clears throat> I think, in a way, to, you know, to get uh, it looking similar to that, you know. It's worth the effort because I mean, if you're going to all this effort of like putting all the other little bits in, you might as well go the whole hog as best as you can. Like I said, if it was a quarter scale, not a fifth scale like this, A, it's a lot easier to work on because it's larger, and B, there's a lot more you can do with it. It's space, for example, in here, like to put the proper hooks in and stuff. So that's the best I can get it anyway. And there's people out there that probably do it 100 times better, bless them. So, and good luck to them, you know. But I hope that it helps showing you the sanding bit. <laughs> Mother knife. <coughs> oh well, yeah and wear a mask believe me okay right that's that so the next stage will probably be this bit here at the back fit the tail plane on which I'm quite looking forward to and then do the outer riggers on top the spars and then that's mainly the fuselage the only other bit I might add down here gonna have to do a trick here as well where you put the hook through screw it through the fuse blew it in at the inside so it looks realistic to like the real one so you've got the rigging goes to there so I look at it as neat as possible really 
and then uh, that should be that. A few right, this is like obviously the top wing, and uh, if you because Ian and me are building this as close to the scale of the real thing as possible, hence why the extra effort of putting in the rods that should be where they are, or whatever. So, this is on the real plane. If you look at the front on there, there's a little caption. Yeah, you know, that's a see through thing. You actually see there's an inspection hole. And I think it was Chris Otwell, Mr. Chris Otwell, told me that that's when a later issue. Oh, no, it weren't Chris, sorry. It was, uh, I forgot his name. I'll come back to oh, it's gone. Right. But that was a, a modern requirement from the CAA because I didn't have them on the original pup, apparently. But anyway, that's that's there now. And that's what I'm we're copying the one from the Shuttleworth collection. So that's there, and you can inspection hatch. Anyway. <coughs> So Ian, what I was talking about, the rod it goes through like this, see, I'll, I'll break it backwards, so that's how it should end up Ian, this reason that's on there, is so when you cover it, you've got, a, this rod can go in and out, with the, like doing like a servo plate, it's the same sort of thing but in reverse, so if I pop it up, you'll see I've done it, let's take that out of the way, okay, I can, I'll get around it, uh, obviously I'll just put a bar there, piece of old scrap bolster, drill the hole through it doesn't matter what size you do it, as long as you've got it you do that first Ian, yeah, you put that in with your drilled hole forget all this for now and then obviously once you've got your wire in place I mean you can use any horn you want, I've used that, it's the only thing I've got left because I've used everything up on the other plane So, but you can obviously change that at a later date because this is all going to be sprayed afterwards, the colour code so that'll be colour coded with the rest of it okay, and then obviously as you do it, I'll try and put that back with one hand which is not going to be easy and, uh, so, and obviously, right, hang on, right. it's a pain in the bloody ass. it's the wrong way around, that's why, right, I'll try and get it back as neat as I can, right, that's the way, right, that's rough, but I'll do, uh, they'd obviously we take the other one out, see, so your other one goes up and down, and it's smoothly in and out, and obviously you make the wire long enough at the back, so that it doesn't, when it goes down, it won't pop out of the rip. You could put a collar on there, but that's a lot of work for nothing. Because you obviously with the end, it's not going to be that far backwards and forwards, up and down. You know, you know, you're not going to have it like doing super stunts like uh, Martin Thompson does. <laughs> Bless. So you know, so that's the way you go about it. E. Right? If you get stuck, give me a ring again. But obviously, don't make the wire, make the wire. So it's, you, that, I mean, that's the length I want it. You know what I mean? When I'm going for the aileron travel. You don't want it out there, that's way more than enough. Okay, so I hope that helps you, but that's how you do it on both sides of the top wing. On the bottom wing, it doesn't really matter because your servo is going to look the part for the wire it sticks out. Okay, but if like you, you've put your servo tray there instead of there, well, it's fair enough. So you might have to make a dummy one underneath, but I wouldn't go at that effort if I was you, because it will look just as good, and nobody's going to inspect it. So, but that's how you go about that. And then any other thing, Ian, that I meant to tell you about, see here if you can see it i'll try and get it better on the bloody light in it see these screws that's how i'm bolting mine straight up i'm not screwing them up into the wing i've put these epoxy these screws bolts in here they're epoxied in and obviously on the top i've put another block in and i bolted uh, epoxied all that in so they will never come out in a month of sundays okay and that's how i've done mine because i remember saying you obviously sand that shape that i've done on all four that's important mate it really is that's how i know on your plan it says just screw them up into the hardwood but that i wouldn't trust it to be honest better to be safe than sorry so that's so far as that tomorrow i'll finish the other wing off like that and obviously when you come to covering it as well with this on ian you got a guide then to find the hole because obviously you're going to cover it first and then obviously you'll put the wire through after so there's your guide as well that's how it all works like that hope that helps mate Okay, and obviously you choose how you do it. Okay, all right, and boss. So I hope that helps. And then tomorrow, or well, shall I carry on? I'm gonna see if I can get onto the middle bit, e, like, and then we shall see how that works. That should be quite interesting because it's all wood embellished in there. <laughs> nice. Right, this bit's really mainly for Ian Macintosh because we were discussing it earlier, trying to get it is to look as like the sock with puppet uh, Shuttleworth. Anyway, as we discussed, there's not six ribs, only five in the middle because of the way the kit's been made. But not a worry. All right, so what I've done is, it's like, as you can see, it's sitting in there like a dummy version of it. So that'll come out to cover that rib there and to make it look the same. This, right, okay, don't stain it or nothing once you've made it E, right? Because basically, once you put the covering on, you're going to have to, like, might have to sand it to fit it in with the covering thickness going on, okay? So that's there. How you got that rib, I'm sure you've kept him like me or somebody else. I mean, you put it on there like you do 
you only want the middle bit of the rib obviously so you take it to the straight edge at the bottom of the sheet trace it out cut it out for both sides and they will fit lovely okay and then you clamp it on so you can get this match you know clamp it to the rib the side piece like there like I've done on there see and then you just clamp it on so you can get these bits in situ and then same with the middle bits you only want to do the back the trailing and leading edge of the uh, frame don't worry about the ribs in the middle because obviously they've got that's how they look on the plane so you just do them the same way get them so they fit nice and snug on there and then there's a bit at the back and then you leave them again and then sheet the top like you do normally and sheet the bottom same with the back just sheet this bit here just do one strip down the centre because this is where your plastic's going on the next new rib you've put in so there'll be enough room there to get the sheeting on because and then on top of that sheeting there's another rib it goes over the top uh, capping strip sorry and that's stained all the way that one that one that one that one that one and so forth so repeat the process that side as well job done sheet this bit here like it is on the plan and then obviously we discussed this is wrong so we need to put the curvation in there and you, as I showed you in the picture it comes to a point yeah and that's how it looks on the real plane so but we'll get to that afterwards and then well after that once the covering's on then we can uh, work out that centre strut that goes to the middle and the rigging because obviously you can put all once you've got it all covered and sanded to so you can get it all nicely snug in right stain it all first and then you glue it right in because obviously you don't want to cover the well it doesn't matter because you're going to spray the top anyway but you know what i mean so we'll get to that stage when we get there so that's your next job e you've got to make them like you know that's your next job i'm telling you <laughs> all right and then we'll cover this bit tomorrow so that's your homework hee <laughs> hee jelly all right okay i don't think we can see like on the picture we're aiming at this piece now around the back end of the wing the curvature okay uh, so that's what we're looking at there if you can see see and there's other pictures that i've sent you but that's the one i've gone by because i know the shape and obviously here what i've done i'll go for this first see this this is what i was talking about the other day in uh with your false inner bits uh these are the back bits that go there all right see and i've made you notice know, so i've marked them corresponding to which ones because they're not all exactly the same obviously so when it comes to gluing them in you know where they're going okay so that's them bits and obviously this bit here is like your dummy right like i showed you the other day yeah, right see and then that's obviously your dummy and that's what i meant by making just you only have to make the back ends because you've already got the ribs there in place okay same with that one obviously it's the other side and that one there okay and they're all marked so you know which ones are what that's how you do that now Ian, it, there, you could might have another way of doing this but this is this is old, old scrap block that i've got it was just old scrap bits of bolster that i had hanging around so what i've chose to do is just formulate it tight into the groove the angle of your you know your rear trailing rate edge of the wing <coughs> uh, and also just cut them because you know what width you're going to make the curve when you're inside here it's going to be a nice curve now what i've done is because obviously it's massively thick whilst it's the glue setting to hold them in tight i've not glued any of this obviously right it's just to hold the two blocks in with white wood glue i've marked the edges round here might be able to use a pen so i've marked the edges with the pen tip round all the way round same on the bottom and on the other side and this side is flat to the wing more or less yeah and the other side obviously is going to be sticking out so i've marked the bottom of that and when we get to it when it's all dry take that out and then we cut down there it doesn't have to be at an angle it's up to you but if you cut it flat then you've got room to shape it plus if you cut it right if you make a cock up which is inevitably gonna happen with me you got this side to go with but you won't you'll be all right because obviously when this is cut to the shape of the, w the, the wing you then got to sand it to a point as it is on there as you can see that's a sharp point okay so you can try and get that right it'd be <laughs> fun so that's the homework for whenever you get round to it I feel like a school teacher. Get your homework done. <laughs> okay, so that, and that's basically. Oh yeah, and obviously, I've put the cap in on the, the rear cap in, front and back, and your cap sides there, and the bolts. I see. And then once that dries, it's just a bit of patience and waiting for it now. We can uh, carry on. Okay, boss. And then uh, hopefully I'm going to order the covering tomorrow because I need to get uh, some more. I haven't got any antique white left. Guess where I used that? Hmm. No more. 
so that's that then once this is made the curvature is done right the then the, the next stage is basically cover it and then we work on the middle bit with the plastic goes over so you, you know the see-through bit okay well, we'll come to that when it comes to it woohoo quite chuffed with it now it's, it's almost there ready and that'll be the top wing ready to go so this is how it is uh, ladies and gentlemen as obviously as you can see with this light it's in glued tight now <coughs> Ian, the way, another way because you bought one of these I think so well, as I said earlier cut it but what you could do instead like I did I cheated I uh, got on the flat belt sander and where I told you earlier in the last video mark the lines I just sanded it flat to the lines on this because it's quicker and uh, a lot easier right so you got them in line and then basically as you can see I drew a center a black line down the center right or there to give myself a guide and then as you can see there I've sanded roughly sanded this bit so it's got a curvature on it to the line try not sanding over the line because that's your final detail when you get there because you're going to have to sand the other side so you've got to keep that line in mind but uh, do the side bits first not the back bit for god's sake because the back bit believe it or not it's not needs that much sanding as you'll see when you get to these because you know, okay so and that's basically that mate i'm sure you can get it so it's there and it's underneath and it'll look the part i know it's not to scale because the, like i said to you ian it really it should be there the curvature starts round and up like that but on this particular plan and model it would weaken the wing structure immensely uh, if it was a quarter scale you would do it properly there but unfortunately mate we just have to go with this because it's a flare kit and that really is you could do it if you really want to if you solidified all this inside but for what we've gone so far mate it's a lot of work for really little gain if you know what i mean uh so you know it just gives you that effect really because like you said the struts are in the wrong place and everything else to, to, but if you were a purist you would do it all and redo the whole quite a lot of this wing you'd rebuild because like i said in, on previous videos these are the wrong ribs uh, are in the wrong places and everything so you got to bear in mind that right that this was a flare kit and it was made as a puppeteer not a pup so it was a basic kit build uh, just to get a, a plane in the air that resembles a pup you know and uh to be fair i've seen quite a few of these in the past and they do look nice when they're in the air as they were we're just trying to make it a little bit more realistic so you've got artistic license mate you know i mean you can fault any of this like this is not right and you know and the curvature on the end that's not quite like it is on a real pup but you know once it's up in the sky mate people ain't gonna notice you know unless you've got a proper inspectors there if you would take you to a, like a competition thing like they have at the at the nationals then i wouldn't <laughs> i wouldn't put it in there because your purists would say well that's wrong this wrong you know they're like but we're just doing it for a bit of fun mate you know it's good practice for the next plane because when the next one we build it will be exactly to as it is so you know it's a bit of practice pal that's all it is but you see what i mean so once we've got that in situ and the line go down to the line and once you've got it all nicely rounded both top and bottom and i might add you know it's, i'm using this this is like look how old that people worn out it's always good to keep like worn out sandpaper because believe it or not that's actually better to use than the coarse stuff because it gives you a bit more chance to get it fine if that makes sense that's just me i mean other builders are probably totally different but that's how i do it but it seems to come out and then obviously once you've got it all sanded that way you could cheat a little by putting filler in you know to cut the gaps although to be honest if once you've covered it you won't see that you know but it's just how how far you want to go with it okay mate so i know i'm talking to my mate ian but this is uh, this is really a video it's to tell everybody who's watching it because I'm, I'm quite surprised how many people are following this and don't say anything you know you know because i don't blame them but you know but when i'm saying this to ian i'm talking to everybody in mind it's like uh you know got one of these puppeteers or any kind of building really this is how it goes you know okay right okay so a quick video ian and all the guys at the bmfa and rc builds uh that's the outcome of it see so you've got your knife edge like it is on the real plane and the cover bit of the back so it's all nicely shaped and curved now so that's that that there now is basically the wing finished to the point of uh waiting for the covering to turn up and then like i said in the previous video once the covering's in and the wing's covered this piece here where my fingers are all four sections here on the plane at the shuttleworth this is all see-through it's got a perspex over the top and that 
so uh, and I talked to one of the engineers which was a quite a nice thing to do uh, on at Shuttleworth collection and he explained the reason they got that is, is because uh, later on in the war or whatever to bore your pants off you people the pilot could actually see up through the wing to see who was coming but above him like a uh, so he had a bit more of an advantage I suppose in the warfare they were playing at the time so I see uh, that's the way it's going um, I'm knackered <laughs> mercy day today bloody hell so yeah so uh, next thing I'll do now is I'll probably look at the tailplane and get that connected to the fuse which is in under the under there if you can see it there's the fuse and um, catch up on that because obviously after building the Hayford I wasn't sure where I got up to and everything really to be honest okay right in chaps and girls that'll do right cheerio those magnificent men, those magnificent men, those magnificent men.